This instructional companion on rolling wheels falls under the major topic Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters, Properties of Solid Bodies, Kinematics, Kinetics, me Mechanisms and Power Transmission Systems, and Vibrating Systems. In the chapter on Kinematics, there's a great many topics, Particles versus Rigid Bodies, and we've been talking about Rigid Body Kinematics for several instructional companions. Coordinate systems conventions, linear part particle motion, distance speed, lots on projectile motion, rotational uh, particle motion, different other acceleration systems, relative motion, which we'll be including here, dependent motion, general plane motion, which is what we have here as well, rotation about a fixed axis, which uh, is the topic or the section under which uh, uh, the MERM talks about rolling wheels, instantaneous center of acceleration, slider rod, a, another instructional companion, and slider crank assemblies, a future uh, instructional companion. The rolling wheel, like the slider uh, rod, or is a classic uh, 2D uh, rigid body in which uh, you're typically given uh, a velocity, or you may have to find it, uh, the velocity of the center of the wheel, uh, an angular rotation, uh, sometimes given in uh, re uh, revolutions per minute, which you would need to ca uh, return to uh, radians per second, some radius r. And what we've learned in uh, rigid body uh, kinematics, the equation for any point, and we'll call it just point p, the velocity of any uh, point is the velocity of any other point, and what we're going to do here is use the center of the wheel, uh, velocity of c, plus the velocity of p relative to c as if c, uh, p is fixed. Okay. So what we have here is if we're holding p, uh, p was down here, then we would have rotation about, uh, about that point. This particular point here is our no-slip, well, the no-slip point, in which we know or have already uh, shown that that is equal to r omega. So the two are related there. We're going to see that a little bit more here in a minute. The uh, velocity of that particular point equals zero. We could call that point q if we wanted to. Okay. However, the MERM approaches this problem uh, from a what's referred to as instantaneous center, some principles there that I won't go into, because I feel that's limited. It's very graphically intensive, and before uh, he gets through with the uh, example 5511, which uh, I will do uh, this particular way, he's using the law of cosines. Well, how many like that idea? Raise your hand. Well, I thought so. Okay, let's see how we can do this uh, more formally using, again, our basic equation, the velocity of, of two points on a rigid body, any two points, the velocity of one equals the velocity of the other, plus the velocity of the other uh, as, uh, as, as if C is fixed, as if the other point is fixed. And if it is, then it's in circular motion, and we've talked about that, all right? Again, remember, these are the absolute terms in the relative motion equation, and this is the relative term. And again, it's motion, essentially motion uh, about a point. Motion in a circle, I think, is what I've referred to as before. Okay, let's go to the next page and show how, again, we talked about general motion being the sum of translation plus rotation. So again, plane motion, and of course plane means 2D essentially, is, and all motion, is a sum of a pure translation plus a pure rotation. Well, what does this look like for the rolling wheel? Okay, if we look at the translation part, here we've got our V sub C, and every point, I'll just pick the four main points, we've got a, and these uh, vectors I'm trying to make exactly the same length, each point here is V C, and this goes for any point on the, on the rolling wheel, if we had one over here, we'd have that, that's the translation, then if you come over here to the rotation part, Again, we've got uh, r here, and we've got omega. So each one of these is an r omega. So we could go up here, and I think I'll just put a little cross here. 
So here's our r, and since r omega equals vc, all these vectors ought to be the same length as the vc. So here we have an r omega. Again, omega is clockwise here, at least for this particular rolling problem. So all of this is 90 degrees, the velocity on a circle. Looks like that. So we have vc, vc, that's the translation, plus the rotation about point C, and it just looks like it's motion. That's the velocity of any point um, as if C is fixed, motion in a circle. Well, let's see what that looks like added together. Okay, when we add those together, uh, we can go all the way around. I call this uh, A. So what happens is you've got VC plus R omega, so that VA equals 2 VC, twice the velocity of the center. That's an important result. Um, could be an FE problem, certainly just a quick short answer there. If we call this uh, B over here, then add these two together, and this is both of them being equal, so that's the velocity of B. All these are velocities. This one you'd have the velocity of, call this one A, B, C, D. So this would be the velocity of D, which again would be the sum of those two at a 45 degree angle. And because again, R omega is again the condition that of uh, VQ equals zero again, the no slip condition. Okay, again that's all about the velocity uh, of a rolling wheel, any particular point on the rolling wheel. Well I didn't feel like we could leave um, the rolling wheel without talking about uh, with kinematics being the geometry of motion. If you look at a rolling wheel and look at the path that a single point makes, and let's take it, uh, this particular no-slip point goes up, you say about halfway, uh, we'll end up with um, twice the velocity, then back down to zero. So that if you follow this point, uh, there's this sort of curve here, and this is called a cycloid, a very famous curve um, in kinematics and in all of uh, dynamics. Lots of stories on there. You might look up the Procrystochrome problem, uh, but that's another day. Okay? But couldn't go here without talking about uh, what is called the cycloid. Okay, let's look at the MERM example from our approach. Okay, the example that's in the MERM in the section on rotation about a fixed axis, well, rota uh, a uh, rolling wheel is not about a fixed axis, but its piece is, and the question uh, is asked, what is the velocity of P, uh, the absolute total uh, components of that, and the answer is wanted in feet per second. And what you're given is uh, the uh, diameter of the wheel, of course, a real tire, whatever, would be flat on, flatter on one side, so the radius from the center down to the touching point would be different, but let's just say we've got a solid wheel here, so the radius is actually 17 and a half inches. Uh, then the center of the wheel is given uh, uh, as a speed of 35 miles an hour. To me, uh, that's too many 35s and a problem, but that's okay. And the point P is 45 degrees up from uh, from this horizontal line. Okay. So that question is, uh, VP is going to have an X and Y. Uh, what what is that? Okay. Well, let's uh, rather than using the instantaneous centers, which then eventually requires you use the law of cosines. Let's use our equation. Okay, and that means saying the velocity of P is going to be the velocity of any other point, and we like C because that's a, we know a lot about that. VC plus the velocity of P relative to C as if C is fixed. Okay, so what does that look like graphically? Okay, I've kind of drawn another little figure here. Could have done it on the main figure, but I just kind of drew another one to make it clear. So we have is our translation V sub C and our rotation about point C, R omega. So essentially what we have is uh, a triangle. This thing re represents the following triangle. We've got uh, VC, we've got R omega, and here's our VP. Okay, so there's our vector vector triangle. But we're going to do this by scalars. So, so using our essential coordinate system, x to the right, y up, moment clockwise. I saw a video the other day. A instructor ac actually added m to that. I like that. I, mean, I have I've been doing this for 31 years. I can learn. I like that. So I'm going to add that from now on to my little coordinate systems. So let's do x and y. We're going to need a moment here. Okay, well if you just look at our figure here, uh, VPX on the left, VPX, VPY, 
Uh, VC only has a horizontal component, doesn't have a vertical. The R omega term has a cosine 45 and a minus sine 45. So you got the two equations, two unknowns. And once we find the um, dx and vy, we just take the square root of the sum of the squares, and we will be there. Vpy squared. Okay, well, let's do that on the next page. But again, let's not miss the point that we're just using uh, x and y components. We're not having to go to the law of sines or law of cosines. Okay, again, to save you two time, let's, we do need uh, v sub c, 35 miles an hour, converted to feet per second, our standard uh, conversion. Uh, however, in the example, uh, we also need r omega, but uh, we know vc equals r omega. So instead of having to calculate r and omega, uh, we just write down the following that V uh, R omega is equal to uh, 5133 feet per second, well, equal, which is equal to VC. So we're done with that. We've got the both the terms. So again, to save YouTube time, well, if you put in uh, the first equation is V sub C plus R omega cosine. So we've really got 5133 times 1 plus cosine 45. And so you get the X component of the velocity of P as 8763 feet per second. The Y is minus uh, R omega sine 45, but R omega is 5133. So that comes out to be minus uh, 30.6. Well, square each of those and take the square root. So when you take the square root of the sum of the squares, uh, 8763 squared plus minus 36.30 squared, take the square root uh, to two decimal places like we've been carrying along, 94.85 feet per second, or round it to 94.9, which is what uh, the MERM gives. So we get the same answer, but I think this is a way uh, lower intense uh, math uh, uh, trig than uh, the law of sines and cosines. The, uh, the instantaneous centers is an interesting um, approach, but uh, I, I, I don't warm up to that. This is just way too, uh, too easy to do sine and cosine. Okay, well, uh, I'm curious, I hope you are too, about well, what, 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 what is omega? So as I say, to save YouTube time, Curiosity says omega is VC over R, 5133 over 17.5, gives 35.2 radius per second, about 336 RPM. Well, I hope this approach helps you uh, to solve uh, any sort of rolling wheel problem. At least for velocities, acceleration is another thing. Again, I invite you to uh, visit my website, 